On Donahue, tomorrow morning at 9, do religion and politics mix. Don't miss it. From the Channel 5 News Center, this is Action News Tonight. With Brenda Wood, Joe Birch, Dave Brown, Jack Eaton, and the first team in Mid-South Television News. Good evening. One of Memphis' oldest and most important manufacturing plants is shutting down. International Harvester announced today it will close its Memphis plant on May the 1st. Harvester says the decision is final. There is no chance of the city making another effort to save the 36-year-old plant. International Harvester says it has lost so much money in its agricultural equipment division, it must close the Memphis plant. Mayor Hackett was one of the first to learn of Harvester's decision today. After meeting with IH officials, he held a news conference at City Hall. The agribusiness is so poor in this country that they could survive no longer. Their losses on a monthly basis was into the millions, and the decision had to be made. Hackett said $1.8 million Memphis loaned Harvester through a federal grant will be repaid. That loan to IH was part of an intense effort to keep the Memphis plant open. Two years ago, Harvester first announced its plan to shut down the Memphis factory, but Will Hergenrader and a task force of other city businessmen helped secure the government loan that kept the plant open. Hergenrader said today that effort was well worth it. We bought two years of, of uh, continued employment for those people. That's amounted to about $40 million a year to our economies. Hergenrader is now urging city employers to hire the hundreds of IH workers who will soon be laid off. In Washington, Congressman Ed Jones told Action News 5 he wishes Harvester would close another plant instead of the one in Memphis. And when you look at the figures and the losses that they've had, and the fact that the agricultural economy of this country is so poor, going down each day, and really no hope for the improvement at the present time as we see it, and I'm talking about we people in agriculture, uh, I cannot criticize International Harvester for closing a plant. Congressman Harold Ford said today he'll ask for federal funds to retrain harvester workers. Harvester says the operations of its Memphis factory will be moved to Rock Island, Illinois. The closing of the harvester plant in Memphis means 650 people will lose their jobs. They're the workers with seniority, the ones who survived the layoffs of the last few years, in which at least another 1,000 workers lost their jobs. Few said they were surprised by today's announcement, but the union representing them was angry at the way Harvester released news of the closing. They didn't call us together this morning just to have something to say when you have a vice president, uh, Moraski, come down and doesn't even tell the plant manager that he's going to be in town, and they come out in taxi cabs and drop it on him. You know, it, it was a shock to the local <clears throat> management also. The union says it will help members either relocate or search for other jobs. And there's no question the people who feel it the most are the many men and women who work at Harvester. That's for sure. Imagine working one place 10, 20, even 30 years and now being forced to leave. A lot of Harvester workers are in that boat right now. This evening I went to the home of one of those workers who says the closing is like having to say goodbye to an old friend. You can't go to school and learn what I'm David learning. Cox has All put right. in 15 and a half and years at International Harvester. He got his first company paycheck soon uh, after high school graduation. Now his last company paycheck is fast approaching. It's going to be pitiful for us this week. Everybody's finally, they know it's gone now. Uh, Harvester has made a good living for David Cox and his family. Eight years ago, his wife was able to quit her job. They now live in a brand new house. Those are the highs for David Cox and Harvester. The lows include a period of more than a year and a half that he was laid off. He says the recent and consistent troubles at Harvester have been hard on everyone. And though he's sad to see it go, he's also relieved. I guess the only way I could compare it would be like the sick animal. It's suffering, but when it does die, uh, you feel relieved. It's not suffering anymore. And that's the way we look at it. I'm an optimist. Relief or not, it's going to mean a new set of worries for Cox and his family. Few jobs will pay him the $500 a week he was making at Harvester. But David Cox isn't bitter about the past. He's only concerned now about the future. If nothing else, it's added to the economy of the city the year it's been here. And um, 
it's added to my income. So uh, again, I'm not, uh, it's gonna be hard to finish up, but I hope they can give us some idea how long we're gonna be there. As a machinist, David Cox could be laid off any day now with only three days notice. He told me he feels certain his days at Harvester will not last until May.